Good morning. When I was a sprog growing up in Newcastle, we lived about three quarters of the way along a terrace. At the end of the road was an open all hours shop, a bit like Arkwright's, except ours was called Foster Tate. My mum would send me there most lunch times to, to, to buy something which we were running out of. We used to eat a lot of bread. The loaf we got was called black and green. I think those were the names of the bakers, not the colour of the bread. But it seemed to be the best in the range that was available. Well, you didn't need to say what you wanted. You just went into the shop and said, Can I have a black and greens, please? And the shopkeeper produced a loaf. Nowadays, you can go into pretty much any supermarket that's got its own bakery. And there you find shelves and shelves of dozens of different national loaves, as well as a wide selection of specialist ones. What do you choose and why do you choose it? I love the olive loaf and the bread that has cherries in it and spread either with uh, olive spread. It's a little bit different from the days of black and greens that was rather tasteless and on which we spread dripping. But regardless of where the bread has come from, it contains so much of what we need for our daily food. Carbohydrates and proteins, fats and vitamins. Recently we've been looking at the feeding of the 5,000, or perhaps 20,000 since the men weren't there on their own. At the end of the day, Jesus sent his disciples off to Capernaum, sailing across the lake. He then dismissed the people, telling them to go home. And Jesus went up into the mountain to pray. There's a good pattern here from which we can learn to give thanks to God the Father and then feed the people. Set in motion the plans for tomorrow and then spend time in close prayer and communion with God as the day comes to an end. The following morning, some of the people came back looking for Jesus. Although they'd been dismissed, they'd returned to the place of the feeding. Isn't it strange how we often go back to a place where we've experienced something really good in the hope of retrieving a little bit more? Many of them had seen the boat leave from the shore and knew that only his disciples were on board. And because Jesus had dismissed them from the place, no one had seen him leave and go into the mountains. And none of them had later seen him walking across the water to catch up with his disciples as they sailed for Capernaum. Disappointed, some of them sailed across the lake whilst others walked round the edge. When they got to Capernaum, they were more than a little surprised to find Jesus was already there. So once they beached the boats and caught up with him, they demanded to know how he was there. Although that was not their prime quest, finding him there had thrown them off balance. What are you doing here? As usual, Jesus has a different agenda and is not interested so much in how he moves around the place as in the reasons why people follow him. Most followed him because of the miracles that he performed. Others because of his teaching. This group though had followed him across the lake because of the food they had received. They had witnessed a small number of loaves being distributed from baskets to 5,000 men, plus probably another 5,000 women and perhaps 10,000 children and each had received more than enough to sate their hunger and there was still plenty left over. For virtually all of us we work to buy or grow food. After that comes somewhere to support our families and then if anything is left we look to more luxurious items. Luxurious in that the things that we want rather than the things that we need. Jesus was saying to the people, 
change the reason for your work. Work for food that leads to eternal life. Alter your focus and work for God. Already they're confused. How can we do the works of God? The rabbis and the teachers and the scribes working in the synagogues and the temple, they're the ones who do the work of God. More recently, people would say the same, the priests and the ministers working in the churches and the chapels are doing the work of God. But they can't do that work on their own. They need support from us to do that work. And this is part of our working for God. Jesus was looking even beyond this, knowing that he had the authority of God the Father to offer this food that leads to eternal life and to offer it to everybody. The people see Jesus as a miracle worker, a prophetic leader, a temporal potentate. This contrasts so much with Jesus as the giver, the medium through whom God the Father blesses his people and through whom the people could access God the Father. The question of the people still stands though, how may we do the work of God? How do you do the work of God? What drives you? Jesus' reply was simple and yet still confounding. Have faith in the one whom God has sent. Have faith in me. Still confused, the people replied, we need a sign. Give us a sign so that we can see and have faith in you. Even with all the miracles they had witnessed, they were still wanting more. Then they refer back to the time of Moses and remind Jesus, as if he needed reminding, that Moses had given the people bread from heaven. Couldn't they not see a link between what God had done for the people in the desert and what Jesus had just done for them only yesterday? You can almost hear Jesus sighing and saying to himself, why can they not understand? But in his infinite love and patience, Jesus said, it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread of heaven. The bread of God is the bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus is bringing in a number of things here. Firstly, he's telling the people that he is the Son of God. It is my Father who gives you the true bread. That in itself would qualify Jesus to be stoned to death. But that time has not yet come. Secondly, he's reminding the people that the manna that the Israelites were fed in the desert had come from God sufficient food for each day to be collected, each day except on the Sabbath, before which twice as much could be collected. And thirdly, Jesus said that God is still supplying bread every day, and this is giving life to the world. The people asked for this bread forever. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread come down from the Father in heaven. Anyone who comes to Jesus will never need uh, to have food and anyone who has faith in Jesus will never need to drink. This doesn't mean that we do not need to eat again because our bodies still need nourishment. But we need to consider our spiritual diet and the only provider of that is our Lord Jesus. Jesus also linked this to his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, where he eventually spoke to her about the water of life. Yet another exciting story, which you can read about in John chapter 4. 
we need to receive both Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the bread and the water of life. At the Last Supper, Jesus put in place a memorial of his life and work on earth, what we now call Holy Communion. Part of this is to receive bread, the symbol of his body. To set ourselves up for each new day, we should begin by taking in his body, renewing our relationship with him and seeking his will. And we should drink in the Holy Spirit, providing us with the strength and guidance that we need for the day and what it might bring. For some people, this is the receiving of Holy Communion every morning, and for others, it's having quiet time with the Lord Jesus, soaking him up. Breakfast is said to be the most important meal of the day. Starting every day right with Jesus is the most important thing that we can do. There may be a wide range of tasty breads available to satisfy our worldly needs, but there is only one Jesus who is the bread of life and provides us with the food of eternal life. Without him, our eternal life will wither and die. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, for the example that he gave to us when he walked on this earth, for the things that he taught us with great patience, humility and love. Help us in our daily lives to follow the pattern that uh, he demonstrated. Help us to find space at the beginning of each day to spend with you, Lord Jesus. Help us to soak up you and the Holy Spirit. And through the power of the Spirit, enable us to do your work in our place. And at the end of the day, to come back to you, Almighty God, giving you thanks for your blessings during the day and seeking your protection through the night. We pray this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.